to the afternoon. I want to say that uh, uh, the Spirit of God is alive and active. Amen? Amen. I did not get the program for this, and I say this with uh, uh, respect. I didn't get the program, but for some reason, in God's providence, our team works together. Amen. Amen. Because if you can see, there has been, if you've been listening to the presentations before, there has been a lot of mention of character. Mm. character and I thank God because uh, the previous presentations emphasized that character development is very important for the end time chart. And even more interesting is that in Sister Edith's prayer, she has also mentioned one of the, the, uh, the actual main subject that I'll be dealing with, which is obedience. Did you hear it in a prayer? We cannot comment on prayer, which is direct communication to God, but I can only say that she mentioned the subject that we're going to deal with. Uh, I was looking at things that affect us today. And I was looking at some of the things that teenagers have to deal with. How many teenagers are here today? Are there are teenagers here. Oh, there's one, two, three. Okay, when we say teenage problems today, please do not feel offended because you're teenagers, but these are the issues that teenagers are dealing with today. You will be surprised, teenagers, that these are actual problems that even the adults are dealing with. Adults who are here, are these things that we are dealing with? Are these things that we are dealing with? Suicide. Uh, I will not mention, but a friend told us this week that she was taking her brother to hospital because he had attempted suicide, which thankfully did not succeed. But they recognize there's a serious problem. This is an adult we are speaking about. So teenagers, we are only using you as an example. These are serious problems that even adults are dealing with today. There is violence. The other day, we saw in the media there was something, a marital issue, uh, that uh, the county government had to deal with because someone, uh, adults, someone, someone was abusing his wife, uh, was beating his wife permanently. So uh, uh, violence is not just for teenagers. So teenagers is just an example. Cyberbullying. Online bullying. These are some of the problems that people are dealing with. Internet and <coughs> online addiction. Eating disorders. Many, many issues. Substance abuse. We just got that uh, from Brother Titus' uh, presentation that substance abuse happens in very high places. Very high places. And some of the results are brought to us to consume. Video game addiction. Porn addiction, TV violence, violence at home, and violence in society in general. These are not just teen problems. They are problems that exist around us. Now, what is the greatest need for the world today? The world does not need, does not so much need men of great intellect as of noble character. It needs men in whom ability is controlled by steadfast principle. Which book is that? Councils on Sabbaths? Sabbath school? That should be, CSA should be what? Councils on Sabbath school, I think. Uh, one. But that's what she tells us. that We don't need men of great intellect. Men of great intellect have been valued in society a lot. Because you have an A, you have uh, first class honors. But really, without noble character, you are as good as nothing. We need men of noble character. Uh, now, character development is very important, especially for the end time. A character formed according to the divine likeness is the only treasure that you can take from this world to the next. So is it important? Yes. It is the only treasure. The only treasure. Those who are under the instruction of Christ in this world will take every divine attainment with them to the heavenly mansion. And in heaven, we are continually to improve. How important then is the development of character in this life? Uh, in the book Education, I think page 12, Ellen G. White writes that 
even though Adam and Eve were born with great intellect, they were to continually learn about God, continually in their uh, school, the Garden of Eden, they were to continually learn about God. Now, if we know that, that even in perfection, in perfection they were to continually learn, how much more should we, who have been uh, marred and sullied by sin, how much more should we learn in this life so that we may be prepared for <coughs> the next life? So, uh, what they call a, a learning curve. Our learning curve is steeper. We have much more to learn, much more to unlearn, so that we begin learning the right things, so that we may even get close to what Adam was before the fall. Yet, even in heaven, we will continually improve. So how much more is the importance of development of character in this life? That's Child, Gui Child Guidance, page 161. Uh, let's read from the Bible. Let's read from the Bible these very, very familiar verses. Very, very familiar verses that we have been reading. Uh, Proverbs 22, verse 6. Uh, and I'd like a child to read that verse. A child to read that verse. And also a child to read Proverbs 4, verse 18. I, I thank God that the children here have Bibles. And it's a good thing, isn't it? A lot of my presentation will be focus on children and parenting. So, uh, please read for us. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from you. Thank you. That's true. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. That's very clear reading. And Proverbs 4, verse 18. We have some. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's, uh, what's the name? Okay. Jeremiah. Thank you. The just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Amen. The, the path of the, the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Thank you, Jeremiah. An adult now to read John 6, verse 39. Any verse? John 6, 39? Anybody who has it? And this is the Father's will who has sent me, that of all that he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now this is Christ speaking. First of all, let's notice that when Solomon is speaking these words of uh, training up a child, Ellen G. White writes that Solomon did not say, tell a child the way he should go. Uh -huh. Do you see the difference between telling a child the way he should go and training the child? And she gives the example, some of your farmers like Eric, that when vines grow, vines need to be trained in the way they should grow. You don't just leave the vines because the vines will tend to creep on the ground where they don't get enough sunlight and where if the fruits they will be prone to attack. So you train them. If you can train a plant to grow and bear fruit, how much more should you train a child? Not just tell them. Telling them is not good enough. They should be trained. And then, the path of the just, you begin a walk with Christ. And don't, st don't stop walking. It should shine more and more unto the perfect day. When we begin training these children, we should not train them and leave them. Let us ensure that they are ready for the perfect day, which is our perfect day that we're waiting for. The second coming. The second coming when we will, who are alive will be translated and the dead in Christ shall rise again. But notice also that in John 6, Christ is saying something very profound. He's saying that he has done the Father's will and all that he has given him, he should lose nothing. He should lose nothing. The children that we have in our, our household, they are given to us as gifts. And Christ, he did the Father's will, he lost none. He lost none that was given him. Except the son of addition, who chose to leave him. But all that he was given, he 
should lose nothing. All our children, we should ensure that we lose none of them. None. If we lose any of them, you and I will be responsible. Now that is not just the children in my household. Brother Titus, I am also responsible for you. Because you're my brother. And because we are all brethren, all the children that we come into contact with, we will be responsible for them. One day I will be asked, Ruth came into your congregation where you had the opportunity to point her to Christ. Did you do it? You had the opportunity of standing before her in the pulpit. What did you tell her? What did you train her to do? What did you train Jeremiah or Ellen G. White or William Miller? to do when you have the opportunity. Not just by word, but also by example. Brother Jao, you pointed to us uh, the example uh, that we were given, uh, that these things happened to them as examples. But also what the character that uh, Brother Titus also told us about, that the, neighbor, the neighbor's child might not usually come to him daily, but out of something, out of character, he saw the need to speak to a child of God. And all around us, it may not be your child. It may be a neighbor's child. It may be an office work, uh, workmate's child. And in our offices, some of us who work, if you speak to your workmates, some days they'll tell you they're really stressed. Mm -hmm. And if you ask them, they'll tell you it's back from home. Something happened, a child, a spouse, a neighbor, a child who needs help. How did you influence her? Christ says he should lose nothing. So what are some of the things that we can teach our children today? What are some of the things that our children need to learn? And this is not just our children. Can I teach something that I don't have? No. I cannot teach something that I don't have. Otherwise, what kind of an example will I give? Obedience. Self-control. Quietness. Quietness is a rare thing these days. Uh, in the morning, we could hear some music coming from the background. Because today's world, people are so accustomed to the media that silence is actually mm. uh, hated or even feared. Mm. You know that? Mm. People fear silence. In places where God called people to the mountains, to the forests, to the wilderness, where they could meditate in silence to listen to Him, that is so <coughs> uncommon these days that people try to fill that void with noise or WhatsApp or something they're doing for themselves because quietness is a, uh, something that is feared or abhorred. Respect is not there. Reverence, care in handling property, health principles, cleanliness, neatness, neatness, order, regularity. Those are things that need to be taught. Purity. Helpfulness, industry, diligence, perseverance, self-denial, and selfishness, thoughtfulness. These are things that we ought to teach our children. Uh, if we were to ask the children around us how often they get these things taught unto them. Taught truly from the principles of the Bible, you will find it's very uncommon. It's very uncom uncommon. And yet these are the things that should constitute the elements of true education. How often do you find uh, there's a new curriculum that has just been implemented uh, for uh, the schools, public schools? How often do you find purity taught? Is it taught? No. Not very often. Helpfulness. We do not even find them in the curriculum of uh, education these days. We do not find these things. Obedience, self-control, these are very rare things. In fact, self-control is one of the things that is least often taught because children are taught that what you need and you can get safely, get it. And sometimes instantly. Uh, whether it's food, whether it's gratification, whatever. Get it immediately because self-control is not taught. So these are things that we who are in the end time who are seeking to raise a generation that will meet Christ, ought to think about. Uh, others are economy and thrift. How often do we uh, teach our children to save money? Uh, my young son, Marvin, 
recently we entered a business with him. Uh, he was selling something. And I was teaching him how to make a little money, a shilling out of another, honestly from hard work. You go and show people what they need and you sell it to them for a little money and save the money. I was trying to teach him how you need to save the money and account for the money such that you will be able to pay time. It's a rare thing because I heard that when he went to his school and told his colleagues what he was doing, the teachers picked it up and said, all of you children, come and hear what Marvin is doing because it's a rare thing. But our parents taught us these things. These are things that we were taught. I hope you were taught at that. Were you taught these things? Some of you. These are things that we need to be taught. Simplicity. Simplicity, a rare thing. These days, the more complex you are, the more sophisticated you look, that is, uh, that you are more attuned to things, you're more uh, acceptable because you're sophisticated. Courtesy, simple courtesy of saying thank you for what has been given. And even reserve, you don't tell everybody everything. You are reserved, you, you should keep some things to yourself. Things that happen in the family are just for the family. Some things are just for the family. Cheerfulness, thankfulness, truthfulness. There are things that are not taught these days. Honesty, integrity, self-reliance, and sense of honor. Uh, the Minister for Education this past week told Parliament that 167 <coughs> schools had either been burned or had been affected by some form of violence in these past two months alone. Is that alarming or not alarming to us? Very alarming. Very alarming because we have not even talked about how many children have been involved. In fact, if you looked at uh, last year's statistics of the schools that were burned and the children whose lives were lost, lives lost, you send a child to school, pay fees for them, and the next thing you're called, you're told, you have an incident in school and uh, please rush, come over. And you find your child has, is among the, the dead. It's a terrible thing. Yet if we learned these things, if we taught our children these things, some of those incidents could have been prevented. Uh, obedience is what I will focus on a lot. If we read manuscript uh, 49, which she wrote in 1909, she wrote that children will be happier far happier under proper discipline than if left to do as their untrained impulses suggest. The children here may agree with us that they may not be very happy sometimes when mommy stops you from doing something that you wanted to do. But when you're going back to bed, you are grateful that you were stopped from doing it. Because left to your own devices, left to our own devices as children, we will do things that will harm us. Yet, we may be thinking that children are so unhappy about being disciplined that they will hate us as parents. Yet, she tells us that children will be happier and far happier under proper discipline than if left to do their own things, their untrained impulses. That's what their tra untrained impulses suggest. Now, the higher branch of education is that let fathers Mothers and the educators in our schools remember that it is a higher branch of education to teach the children obedience. Altogether, too little importance is attached to this line of education. Which one? Which line of education? Obedience. obedience. We will see how we can teach children to learn obedience and why I chose obedience out of the many things that I, uh, we can teach for true education. Why I thought obedience is something that we ought to focus on today and to think about. And that it is a higher branch of education to teach the children. Um, prompt and continual obedience to wise parental rule will promote the happiness of the children themselves as well as the honor of God and the good of society. Children should learn that in submission to the laws of the household is their perfect liberty. Christians will learn the same lesson, that in their obedience to God's law is their perfect freedom. Now, uh, this presentation tends to focus more on children. But parents, let us also realize that our role is to give 
prompt and to teach prompt and continue to promote the happiness of the children. That calls on parents to do something. What should parents have there? What should parents have? Wisdom. We should have wisdom. And in having this wisdom, we will then promote the happiness of the children themselves. And then this will lead to the honor of God and the good of society. A lot of what is happening today, there's a friend of mine who keeps saying that when we see so many people sick in society, we should not blame them, even if they're eating wrong. The first person we should blame is the Seventh-day Adventist. You know why? Because we are around them, but we've never taught them the right ways of eating. So if they eat and get sick, who should be blamed first? Me. Me. I should be blamed first. And in the home, in the home, if there is no true happiness, then who is to blame first? Is it the children who are rebelling? No. No. It is the parents. We should know our role as parents, that we should uh, teach prompt and continual obedience. Not obeying today and tomorrow, they are not obedient. Um, what is the will of God? What is the will of God? The will of God is the law of heaven. As long as that law was the rule of life, all the family of God was holy and happy. But when the divine law was disobeyed, then envy, jealousy, and strife were introduced. And a part of the inhabitants of heaven fell. As long as God's law is revered in our earthly homes, the family will be happy. Did you notice that uh, perfect liberty only comes when we obey God? Uh, as we grew up, when we were growing up, certain uh, people, uh, even our age mates, kept saying that USDS, you are your church is not very good. We don't like your church because you are so restricted. On Sabbath, you have to go to church the whole day. There are many other things that people are doing out here, but your church is too restricted. Uh, maybe, I don't know whether it is the deportment of us who are Adventists growing up in that time. We made our church look like it is not a place of enjoyment. Yet, in the presence of God is full liberty and fullness of joy. So, there are people who are watching you. Do you know that there are people who are watching you? Uh, in 1 Corinthians, I think it is uh, 10 verse 11, where Paul says, we are spectacle to, to the world and to angels and to men. So if your department is such that you look like where you've gone to church, you are not even finding joy. There are people who are thinking, maybe it is not the place for me. But really, in serving God, in serving God, we should find perfect liberty. Even children should know that perfect freedom only comes when we obey God. Obedience is very important. And as long as God's law is revered in our earthly homes, the family will be happy. Happiness is something that is very rare these days. In fact, if you were to sample people, even just people going to work, how many of them will you see with a smile on their face? The world is so stressful, so stressful that there is so much slavery and stress. People are coming from stress in their home. They carry it with them to traffic. If you change lanes in traffic, you are driving. In certain places, you are inviting road rage. People will heap abuses on you. And sometimes, it will cause so much stress through the day. Happiness is a rare thing. Yet, the prescription is very clear to us. As long as God's law is revered in our earthly homes, the family will be happy. There are certain things that are not in our control. For example, you can't control the weather. Yet, in obeying God, we will know how to handle whatever external things come to us such like that we will be happy despite. We will be happy despite knowing that we have our eternal home and our Lord is watching over us. Now, Disobedience is a great offense to God. Disobedience and transgression are ever a great offense to God. Unfaithfulness in that which is least will soon, if uncorrected, lead to transgression 
in that which is great. It is not the greatness of the disobedience, but the disobedience itself which is the crime. Sometimes we have been thinking, uh, just uh, disobeying mom today a little, a little is not so much. It's not a big problem as uh, not doing the big things that we have been asked to do. You have been asked to uh, clean the trash or clean the house or clean. You are thinking maybe if you just disobey a little, it will not matter so much. Yet, the problem is not the weight of what you have done. It is that disobedience itself which is the, pro the problem. If you think about it, it was not it was not the weight of the consequences of what Adam did that caused sin. But it was the disobedience itself. You see that? The disobedience was not in the consequences. It was the disobedience itself. The fact that we did not obey. So true education, true education should help us to teach our children to learn to obey, not so much because they are thinking of the consequences, but because they know that disobedience itself is the crime. Um, obedience to God's law is our life our happiness. We look upon the world and see it groaning under the wickedness and violence of men who have disregarded the law of God. This is evident all around us. All around us. Step out of this gate and think about what is happening in the government. Why is corruption a problem? Why is there so much killing? Why is there uh, why is, what is happening in the schools? It is because of the the world is weak, groaning under the wickedness and violence of men who have disregarded the law of God. He has withdrawn his blessing from orchard and vineyard. Why do we not get enough food? This is a, a good reason. Because God has withdrawn his blessing from us in disobeying. How can God bless us in disobeying? Because it will only entrench our disobedience. But because of our disobedience, he has withdrawn his blessing from orchard and vineyard. And I'm not just talking about the actual gardens, but even the gardens of our hearts. The gardens of our hearts, when our lives should be productive, when our witnessing should be very productive, when we disobey, we hinder God from blessing us. Because if he blesses us in disobedience, it is like he's putting a tick and saying, continue disobey. But he has withdrawn his blessings. Now this is very interesting. When I read this, this really touched me. Were it not for his commandment keeping people who live upon the earth, he would not stay his judgment. Do you know that the judgments of God that are to fall on this world are held in check for your sake because of you and me. If we are commandment keeping if we obey God, then even the people around us benefit. Mm. If we disobey, then the effect of our disobedience multiplies and goes to the people around us as well. Mm. But for now, for now, it is because of the commandment keeping people that God has stayed his judgments upon the world. Mm. So is it important to obey and to keep the commandments of God? Mm. I think so. He extends his mercy because of the righteous who love and fear him. Amen? Amen? It is a sacred duty that rests upon the parents to guide their children into paths of strict obedience. True happiness in this life and in the future life depends upon obedience to a thus save the Lord. Not a thus save the professor. Not a thus save the government. Not a thus save the society. Not a thus save the church. It is a thus say the, the Lord. Lord. The Lord, because even the church can be misled. Parents, let Christ's life be the pattern. Did it say the elder or the pastor? Mm -hmm. Whose life? Christ's life be the pattern. Satan will devise every possible means to break down this high standard of piety as one altogether too strict. Just like my friends in childhood used to say, your church is too strict. It is certain speaking, telling them, if you must obey everything that your parents say, it is too strict. But what we are called to is a high standard, a high standard of piety. 
that even if it sounds too strict, that is the pattern that God has set, that Christ lived by every word that comes from the mouth of God. It is your duty to impress upon your children in their early years the thought that they are formed in the image of God. This is something that parents ought to really think about. That we need to tell our children that they are formed in the image of God. The discipline arises from knowing that we are formed in the image of God. There are places that you can't be found. There are things you, that you can't be listening to. There are things that you can't be doing as a child of God. Because you are in that, you are formed in the image of God. Christ came to this world to give them a living example of what they all must be. And parents who claim to believe the truth for this time are to teach the children to love God and to obey His law. This is the greatest and most important work that fathers and mothers can do. Uh, I have been reading Ministry of Healing and Child Guidance. And I find there is a lot of stress on there's a lot of emphasis on what mothers ought to do. And uh, if you read, for example, in Ministry of Healing, she says that what mothers do in teaching children is greater, is greater than the work of kings and rulers of nations. Mothers who are here and mothers-to-be, mothers-to-be. Hopefully those who are not yet mothers will be mothers yet at some point. We ought to realize that the work of mothers is greater than of kings and rulers in, turning, in training a child to learn about God and to obey Him. But fathers too, fathers too have a role that you must facilitate that to happen. Fathers, let's not lay back and say, ah, mothers are the ones who are called to do this work. It is God's design that even the children and youth shall understand intelligently what God requires. That they may distinguish between, the righteous, between righteousness and sin, between obedience and disobedience. Many, many uh, things that happen today tend to block the difference between righteousness and sin. We are taught uh, this is a gray area, you know. <laughs> so you're not sure whether what you're doing is sin or not sin. righteousness or not sin. The devil has devised ways in making things appear to be neither good nor bad, mm -hmm. such that we are told it is a, a humanistic world where you are taught that virtue, the virtue of men comes from what what they decide. It depends. It depends. If it is like this, if you feel it is right, that is what is right. If you feel it is wrong, it is your conscience that guides you. Yet in First Timothy. Paul writes that in the end times, people will be as if their consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. That conscience, you can't rely on your conscience. You have to rely on a thus saith the Lord, such so that you know you can distinguish between righteousness and sin. And where you are in your mind unclear about this, ask yourself whether you have really listened to the voice of God. Because if you listen to the voice of God, it should be very clear. For children, for parents, what is the difference between sin and righteousness? <clears throat> uh, small deviations. Sometimes you may think, I've mentioned it before, that sometimes you may think just that a small deviation is okay. By how far, how far did Adam deviate from that which he was commanded? Was it big or small? Small. It appeared so small. Yet in the eyes of God, was it small? No. Not at all. It is the beginnings of evil that should be guarded against. It is the instruction of the youth. It, in the instruction of the youth, the effect of apparently small deviations from the right should be made very plain. Let the habit of self-control be early established. Let the youth be impressed with the thought that they are to be masters and not slaves. Uh, there is a famous politician who used to say that Every pothole you see today began just as a small crack in the road. A small crack in the road. Then the next day, some bigger vehicles uh, rolled on it, and it, now it is a big pothole. That 
big addicts that you hear of today, an alcoholic who cannot survive one hour without drinking, they just began. Someone told them, please just taste. Just taste. Come, we go and taste. And it began like that. And today it has gotten to something that is beyond them. They can't control it anymore. So it, children, we ought to know that Satan is looking for just a small, he's just looking for a small step in the door of your heart. And the next thing, the whole of evil that he can bring into your life will come. So we should get the beginnings of evil. The beginnings of evil that uh, we may think are too small, but yet, as I say, the camel just put its head in the tent first. And then the next thing, the whole camel was in. The devil is just looking for a small beginning, and then he will enter into the whole of your life. Of the kingdom within them, God has made them rulers. Oh, sorry, I forgot to emphasize something here. Let the youth be impressed with the thought that their masters are not slaves. Substance abuse comes because we let ourselves be slaves to the drugs, slaves to the things that are external to us, and yet we are to be masters of what God has given us for His glory, for His glory, not for our self-gratification. When we see ourselves as slaves, when we let ourselves be enslaved by substances, by circumstances, by our peers, by our friends, then we are not masters as we were designed to be. Man was given dominion. Man was given dominion. Not a place to be enslaved in. So we ought to realize that God gives us an opportunity to be masters and not slaves of circumstances and of things around us. We ought to show that as children of God, we are masters of what is around us for the sake of the name of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the influences of the things around us, our lives are not just with us. Of the kingdom within them, God has made them rulers and they are to exercise their heaven-appointed kingship. When such instruction is faithfully given, the results will extend far beyond the youth themselves. Influences will reach out that will save thousands of men and women who are on the very brink of grief. Just simple obedience, simple obedience will make us follow or exercise our heaven-appointed kingship and this will protect many, many who are on the very brink of ruin. It will help them step back from the brink. Uh, especially, I'm glad that there are small children here and their parents here. We ought to begin early. It is never too early to teach obedience. Mm -hmm. Amen? It is never too early. True education calls us to begin early. Uh, in the secular system, when does uh, teaching children to obey come, if at all, if at all? If you are ever to teach children, when does it come? When they go to nursery school. At what age? Or maybe three, four. These days I'm told that children in nursery school are very young. Okay, they call it play group. Play group is about two years, two years. Should a child at two years be in school at all? No, and they take them there. You take them there thinking it is play group, you're thinking they are playing, but they are being taught. They are being taught. Not true education. They are being taught many things by teachers who are not sanctified, by their own peers who are learning things from the world. Yet, uh, this teaches us not to take our children early to school, but to begin begin teaching them early the right things. Some parents think that they can let their little ones have their own way in their babyhood and then when they get older they will reason with them but that, but this is a mistake sorry, that's a mistake. Begin in the baby life to teach obedience, require obedience in your home school. Now we are not talking just of home schoolers here but we are talking of all homes as schools, all homes are schools and we begin early to teach children about obedience and require it from them and not to think, we ought not to think as parents that it is too early 
to require the children to obey. It is never too early. We begin in the baby life to teach obedience. A child needs to learn is the lesson of obedience. Thank God, children who are here, let's thank God that our parents knew the Lord. Our parents know the Lord. Because some of the things that we went through when our parents were in ignorance did not expose us to lessons of obedience. This is one of the first lessons that a child needs to, to learn. Before he's old enough to reason, he may be taught to obey. The mother's work should begin with the infant. With the infant. She should subdue the will and bring its disposition into subjection. Teach it to obey, and as the child grows older, relax not the heart. Do not think that now because the child has grown older, they should not obey. They should always be under strict obedience. At a very early age, children can comprehend what is plainly and simply told them, and by a kind and judicious management can be taught to obey. The mother ought, the mother should not allow her child to get an advantage over her in a single instance. A single instance uh, is enough to ruin the child. In order to maintain this authority, it is not necessary to resort to harsh measures. A firm, steady hand and a kindness which convinces the child of your love will accomplish the purpose. Harshness. Harshness is not necessary in training children to be uh, truly obedient. But they should see as a firm, steady hand and a kindness which convinces them that you love them and it will accomplish the purpose of obedience and discipline. But let selfishness, anger and self will have their course for the first three years of a child's life and it will be hard to bring it uh, to bring it to submit to wholesome discipline. Uh, have you seen what they use as walking sticks? The what the, the one that is made of wood. I'm not talking of the plastic ones. Mm -hmm. The ones that are made of wood are made when the wood is still supple, when it is still supple, when it is soft enough to be bent. If you wait for the tree to grow to 20 meters, is it easy to bend? Mm -hmm. When you attempt to bend it, it will break. Just like that, the lesson from nature teaches us that we ought to teach the children while they are young and do not hope that when they are older, we will bring them to subjection and wholesome discipline. Uh, its disposition of the child has become soured, it delights in having its own way, parental control is distasteful. These evil tendencies grow with its growth until in manhood, supreme selfishness and a lack of self-control place him at the mercy of evils that run riot in our land. Are evils running riot in our land? Yes. yes. Because Simply because we failed to teach children obedience when they were young. The youth and children who are praying parents have been greatly privileged for such have an opportunity to know and love God. Children, if your parents love God, it is a great privilege because they will point you to our Father, who many children in the world do not have. It is a great privilege to have parents who know God because they will give the children an opportunity to know and love Him. In respecting and rendering obedience to their parents, they may learn how to respect and obey their Heavenly Father. If they walk as children of the light, they will be kind and courteous, loving and respectful to their parents whom they have seen and thus be better qualified to love God who they have, they have not seen. If you love your parents, if you respect your parents whom you see, and this goes to even us adults who have our parents around us, if we love our parents whom we see, then we are qualified to, see our, to love our Father in heaven whom we haven't seen. We need to obey our parents here on earth so that we may learn obedience to our Father whom we have not seen. In our own training, this is a testimony of Ellen G. White. Some people, some of us may be thinking that Ellen G. White uh, had uh, everything uh, going perfectly for her. Yet, in her testimony, she shows that she had children. Did you know that in her home, she had children, even orphans? Mm -hmm. She brought orphans, and many times she did not even have enough money to feed them. And many, many of those children were from troubled families. 
and she had to train them. Train them with lots of effort, lots of patience. In the end, she gives this testimony that in our own training of children, including her own, and in the training of children of others, we have proved that they never love parents and guardians less for restraining them from doing evil. Amen? Amen. So children, this is a good testimony that Ellen White gives us, that she shows that in being trained to uh, avoid evil, it does not make us love our parents any less. No. In fact, many children in their adulthood confess, if we were rightly trained that indeed, if it wasn't for my parent, I would have been lost. I would have been lost. Let parents and teachers impress upon the kinds of uh, the children that, if the minds, that should be the minds. Let parents and teachers impress upon the minds of the children that the Lord is proving them in this life to see if they will render obedience to Him with love and reverence. Those who would not be obedient to Christ here would not be obedient to Him in the eternal world. If you do not learn obedience here, do you think you will learn it in heaven? No, you will not get there in the first place. So learn obedience here so that we know that in heaven we will also obey Christ. And we will keep learning. If parents or children are ever welcomed, this is uh, I'm nearing the end. If parents or children are ever welcomed into the mansions above, it will be because they have in this world learned to obey the commandments of God. Amen? Amen. 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 I've run through because of the shortness of time. But I want us to think about uh, something that we began last time we met here. How many of us were here in the last meeting? Uh, a few of us, Eric, I know you were there. Uh, we learned some things that we needed to, to teach our children in true education. But just like we have learned from Proverbs, now we ought to shine brighter and brighter as the perfect day nears. Okay. So we need to think about what steps can we take to progress, to go forward. Because we can't keep learning and learning and never coming to knowledge. So we need to think about beyond uh, having homeschools, beyond having true education curricula, what practical steps can we take to begin with our children in our home <coughs> schools? And I'm not talking about homeschool as the school where you avoid to take your children to the public school, no. I'm talking about your home regardless of where your child goes to school, even though we know we desire our children to be at home with us because of the evils that are out there. How are we teaching our children practically in our home school such that they see by our example, by our words, by our deeds, that we have learned of the great teacher, that we are teaching our children as well to follow our footsteps, that we may all be led to our Father in heaven. May God bless us. I believe there may be some questions, a question or two before I sit down, but we need to think about how uh, true education needs to lead us to make our homes better for our children so that they may know about our Father in Heaven, whom we have heard. We have heard the voice of our Father in Heaven. Have they seen Him in our lives? Have they seen Him in the way we talk, the way we eat, the way we dress, the way we interact with the people in our community? Are we disciplined? Are we self-controlled? Are we uh, denying ourselves for the sake of the kingdom? May God bless us. Any question or any sharing? Before we pray, I need to give room for our next presentation. Children, we can also ask questions. Any questions or any concerns? I think next time we should have room for a child to teach us. I don't know if they've seen a, another boy in America who... who who instead the parents, you know, as we carry our children, eh? we carry our children preaching. Now it is the parents carrying the. It's a child now. The parents are accompanying her to go to preach. 
Imagine how it will be. Now instead of you preaching, it's the child who's being invited. And he's, he's teaching so well until he was focused on CNN. He had to come to ask the parents and Adventist. I think uh, it's a challenge where we are lucky. As much as we are teaching them true education, I don't think we are inspiring them to stand and to take the mantle. Mm. So I think we should strike a balance between the physical education, which is good, but also the spiritual. The spiritual not be just for them to know, but others to know others. Because uh, the most, if you see in the current syllabus and what the government is doing, it is aiming towards the children. So I think as parents, and they aspire. We have a lot of work, even in our neighborhoods, to, to train. Again, the devices that we have, like phones, I realize even there are softwares for pornography for children. They come in form of cartoons. I think, I don't know, but maybe thank God as we don't do, but I realize the first thing other families do, I don't expect us. The child, when you come home, the first thing is to take the phone. And uh, the things that are taught, even at five years, astonishing, even in school, right now, being taught about marriage at, 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 at um, standard two. I think those are the things that we need to teach them so that they can stand out like the old days. Yeah. Um, when Christ was entering Jerusalem and the, uh, the Pharisees heard the children praising Christ, they were asking to, uh, him to restrain them. But he said, let let the children come to him, uh, the disciples, that, uh, uh, for the disciples. But the children recognize that this is the true Messiah. Uh, the rocks themselves are going to cry out. If we cannot praise God, then the, rock, the rocks themselves will cry out. That's a testimony. I have not watched that video. Right now. Maybe you can share if you ever have them. Oh. It's good uh, for the children. In fact, there was a time I... But after seeing it, I found him in the morning, he had the child saying, in the morning he wakes up and, uh, and he goes to the room, he prays and starts reading. You know, the following day I found my child doing that. Oh. So I think sometimes we can read verses, but when they see life, they get challenged. Mm. Yeah. Amen. The, the next generation that will finish the work may not so much be the pastors and the adults, mm. it will be this young generation. Mm. But they need to be taught right. They need to be taught right, they need to be taught obedience and by our example to follow Christ. Any other sharing? Thank you, Brother So. Any other sharing? Any other comment? Okay. Uh, I'll ask us to stand. I'll ask us to stand and request to commit us and our children to God that we may learn obedience, that we may all come to the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let us humbly pray.